What's up guys, Sparky is here and today I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. For this installation there was no power where the light's going to be. So in this video I'm going to show where I got power from and how I was able to power the ring floodlight. This video isn't for just the ring floodlight cam. It could be any brand that you choose that has a security camera built in. The idea is that you want to have constant power to these type of floodlights that have the camera because if you ever shut off a switch or shut off the power, you're also going to kill power to the camera itself. The first step is to find out where the light needs to be installed. In this situation, I wanted the light centered to the yard to make sure I got the best coverage for the small yard. So I simply measured from one side of the house to the other side of the house and divided it in half and that got me the center of that wall. The next thing is to add a round outdoor rated outlet box and that's going to be where the light's going to be mounted to and this is going to be supported uh, just using some wood screws onto the house itself. The box does come with some half inch knockouts and those can be threaded on to all the holes that you don't end up using to make sure that we keep it weatherproof. I will make sure to link all the material and tools that I use in this video down in the description below. The wire that's going to be feeding this light is going to be ran through the attic. So I'm going to use a paddle bit and a drill to drill through the fascia so I can get my wire into the attic. You can buy a set of paddle bits that have various sizes. You just need to make sure that the size is big enough for your wire that you're going to be pushing through the hole. Before installing the round outlet box onto the fascia, you want to make sure that the hole you're drilling goes into the attic and not underneath the soffit. This will avoid any unnecessary holes. Once the hole was made and the outlet box is lined up, I use some wood screws to attach the round outlet box onto the fascia. Now we're ready to run our wire through the attic. The Ferret by Racketeers is a product that was given to me to try out and my first thoughts are the wheel on the end of the ferret because when I'm pushing this by myself it won't be getting caught on pieces of wood or insulation. The ferret is just a tool to help us pull the wire. So what I'm going to do first is roll out this Romex because I don't have the tool that unwinds it. So the best thing to do is just unroll it by hand and kind of step on it to straighten it out. Um, so that as I'm pulling it through the hole, it doesn't get stuck. And now I'm going to run the end of the ferret with the wheel inside the hole so that we can get this wire into the attic. And as you can see, it didn't fit through the hole where the box lined up. So I had to unscrew the box real quick just to make sure that the ferret fit. And then I was able to tie the Romex using electrical tape onto the end. So as I'm pushing in, I want to get as far into the attic as possible so that when I get into the attic, I can see that ferret and grab it and then pull all the wire in to where I need it. While the box is still loose, I use this time to install the half inch threaded knockouts provided with the box. And remember, these knockouts are needed to make sure that this outlet box is weatherproof. So in the attic, there's a receptacle for an AC unit and I'm going to be using the power from this receptacle to feed my new floodlight cam. So I'm using a Klein circuit tracer to find out what breaker feeds this receptacle. Once I turned the breaker off, I no longer had power at the receptacle, so now it's safe to work on the equipment. Quick disclaimer before I move forward, all electrical work should be performed by a qualified person and everything should meet your local electrical code. This video is for educational purposes only. The next step is to find the wire that I pushed into the attic. So I made my way over to where I drilled the hole and I found the ferret on the ground. 
So I'm going to grab the ferret and pull it all the way to the new receptacle that I'm tapping off of. I want the Romex high and tight, so I'm going to grab the ferret and maneuver it exactly where I want the wire to go so that when I come back and staple it, it'll make it easier for me. Also, if you've never walked through an attic, make sure you're walking on just the wood. If you step off the wood, you're going to fall through the sheetrock. So when running this new wire to the existing receptacle in the attic, I noticed that there was a small attic light that's already existing. So I'm going to follow the same path. I'm going to use the same staples that go down into the receptacle to make it easier. With the circuit off, I'm going to take off the cover plate so I can access the inside of the box so we can run the new Romex into it and make joints. The receptacle is held on by two Phillips screws. So upon opening the box, there was an extra wire in here and it's because they use this box for a junction for the attic light. So I'm pretty much going to ignore it, but I am going to put the new Romex that we just ran into the box so that I can tap off the power for the existing receptacle. And I like to cut my Romex about 8 inches from the back of the box to make sure I have enough room for joints. Using a utility knife, we can cut straight down the middle where the ground wire is and we're going to be pulling back the Romex sheathing and cutting the excess sheathing using um, some side cutters or in the field we call them dykes and this will get us prepped for making joints in the box. And using a spare piece of Romex, I'm going to be making what's called pigtails. When connecting the wire for the new floodlight, we're going to be connecting all the blacks, all the whites, and all the ground together with the wire nut and we're going to have single pigtails for each conductor so that we can feed the existing receptacle. So this box is going to be rewired so I'm just going to cut the receptacle out and start rewiring it. So now that the new wire is pulled in, the first thing I'm going to connect is the ground. The ground is going to be the solid piece of copper and we can achieve this by just twisting it onto the existing grounds. One of the existing grounds is really long, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it long so that when I hook up the receptacle again, I can use that one single copper wire. Next I'm going to gather all the white conductors and all the red conductors and cut them at the same length and then I'm going to use scrap pieces of wire to make new pigtails for the existing receptacle. Using wire strippers I'm going to strip about half an inch to one inch of the wire to reveal the copper so that we can twist them together and put wire nuts to make the joints. Make sure all the insulation is the same length before you start twisting and here I'm doing the hots first and I'm going to put a wire nut to secure the connection. You definitely don't want a loose connection, so I recommend hand tight and then maybe like a quarter turn left and just don't over tighten it. Once the wire net is put on, we can push it into the box and we're left with one pigtail for the existing receptacle. We are going to repeat this step with the neutral white wire. So just a quick recap, we have one wire coming into the box that feeds this box with power. Then we just added another wire that's feeding our new ring floodlight camera. And then we're making joints with pigtails so that we can reconnect the existing receptacle. So looking at the receptacle, we have our hot, our neutral, and ground. Again, we have our hot, 
our neutral and our ground. Now we are left with one white, one black, and one ground wire. And we're gonna strip it about one inch and make loops. And we're gonna connect them to the screw on the receptacle. Pay attention to the direction that I'm putting the hooks on the screws. As you tighten the screw, you want the hook to tighten even more. If you have it backwards, when you tighten it, you're gonna be opening up the hook. So again, we have our hot, our neutral and ground connected. Now we're okay to push the wire into the box. Some people might add that you wanna tape the receptacle screws like all the way around, but this is a plastic box. I would be more concerned if it was a metal box. When installing any cover plate over a switch or receptacle, you wanna just do it barely hand tight. If you put too much torque on it, you'll crack the plastic. So working our way back to the wire that we just added, I'm installing staples and once again, make sure you look at your local codes to see where you need to support your wires in that attic. So heading back outside, we're ready to hook up the floodlight camera. So I'm gonna cut about a foot off just so I can get the wire in and start uh, peeling back the sheathing and making up the joints. I'm also gonna install a Romex connector on the box. Uh, it's kind of backwards, but I'm just using it so that the wire doesn't get pulled into the attic or move at all. Another tip when cutting Romex, cut it straight down the middle, because in the middle of the Romex is the bare ground, and it's okay if you nick it since there's no insulation on it anyways. The outlet box that I added has a ground screw on it, so I'm gonna use that bare ground just to wrap it around that ground screw and make sure that that's connected. So these floodlights get installed just like you would in any outdoor light. The only difference is we have constant power on them because they have a camera connected to it. So it's just going to look like your standard floodlight, comes with all the hardware and all the screws and you could read the instructions to see the proper way to install these because I'm sure in the future the instructions might change. So after my little helper read me the instructions, the first thing is just to install the bracket on the box because we need something to mount this new light to. I like to put clear silicone around the box just to keep it a little bit more waterproof and I like to do this before the floodlight gets installed because once the heads are on it's going to be a little bit hard to maneuver your hand around the fixture. After that first mounting bracket is installed there's a second plastic plate that goes on after that and that's what the actual light is going to attach to. Here in the United States, this ring floodlight operates on 120 volts. There's a little hook that you can attach to the plate just so it can hold the weight up for you and you can start making up the connections. Again, we're going to hook up the grounds together, the whites together, and the hots together. So your ground, your neutral, and your constant hot feeding this floodlight. Once the connections are made, we can feed them up into this little hole and we can attach the light to the two screws that it sits on. This fixture comes with two black decorative screws that get mounted to the front and you can use the provided tool to tighten these nuts.
After it's mounted, we can take the plastic off. We can bring the heads down to get them prepped for when we turn on power. So another quick recap, we had constant power going to the receptacle in the attic. We tapped off of that receptacle to feed this new floodlight. So now we can go ahead and turn on the breaker and see if we have power at the floodlight. As you can see, the ring floodlight is blinking with power. The next steps are just to go into the ring app and connect it to your Wi-Fi and get it all set up. But I hope you guys like this longer video. I try to get it more detailed so that people that have never done this before now know how to do it. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Sparky Izzy. Peace.